Those look like they got swiped up pretty quick this morning, huh? Okay. You're ready. All right. That's my time cue. So welcome. Grab a seat. Let's, let's kick this off. Um, yeah, the title is definitely clickbait. Is there anybody that came here expecting me to completely trash registries and slam them? Sorry, Phil. Sorry, Josh. I'm not going to do that. I, I do love registries, despite all, the, despite all the clickbait title. But I'll get into why, why I'm going that direction with some of this stuff. So I mentioned earlier all the slides up online. So if I go too fast on something, don't worry, don't panic. You didn't miss a picture. It's all up online. You can download it later on. So who am I? Brandon Mitchell. Um, that was on the first slide, so you probably got that already. Solutions architect for Boxboat, just like the shirt says. Um, we are now an IBM company. Got acquired. They pay us a bunch of money. And boss said, hey, if you're going to give us money, sure, why not? Um, also a Docker captain. And I got pulled into that after answering a whole bunch of questions over on Stack Overflow. So if you see B. Mitch over there answering questions on Stack Overflow, that's me. I didn't have to do studio over there. They just gave it to me. Um, also, I'm doing a lot of stuff on OCI, which is why I see me up here on stage right now doing a bunch of this stuff. Um, I've also under the reason I got into OCI is I've written little command line tools to work with registries. So you'll see a little bit of that in this presentation, and a bunch of stuff over on CNCF talking supply chain security. So I jump around a bunch of those working groups, OpenSSF working groups, projects, stuff like that. So I'm around. Some people are familiar with me, but let's talk container images in case anybody is not familiar with a container image and don't worry, we're not talking about just you know Docker build and now putting an image out there and what it looks like. I want to talk about the nuts and bolts of this stuff, what it really looks like under the covers. And I'm going to start with, there are two different kinds of blobs that are out there. And one of the blobs is the config blob. And this is something that should look fairly familiar if you've ever built an image and then later inspected the image. Because what it's going to have is all the different, like the environment variables you've set, the user you're going to run as, the entry point, the commands, any labels you attach to your image. All that goes in this config JSON, and that all gets shipped up to the registry as a blob. So that's one of them. And you might see up there that I'm querying this digest. I kind of cropped it on the image so I, you don't have to see some big long string that goes off the side of the slide. But um, there is this big long digest. And if you're wondering where that comes from, the whole registry is a content addressable store. And so what content addressable store means is that if I ever query the actual raw blob here, and I say pipe that output, the actual byte stream output, through a SHA-256, 256 checksum, I get back the same checksum. So basically, when you push this to a registry, you just compute the checksum which you're pushing up there, and you know exactly what that content is. And so it's a content addressable store. That's what that whole thing means. We're going to see a lot of that today. We've also got the image layers. And so the image layers are the way that we can you know, store all the files we're shipping with image, right? They're shipped as a tar and typically compressed with gzip. There are other compression algorithms we're looking at. But again, same concept, another content addressable store. So this is all shipped up there. I picked an example from Alpine. You can see when I pipe it through tar, you're just getting out from that a uh, whole bunch of stuff that points to BusyBox. In case you didn't know, Alpine is based on top of BusyBox. So then we need to put those two things together. And it's not just one layer. You're going to have a bunch of layers out there. And when we assemble them together, we assemble them in a manifest, another piece of JSON. And that JSON has a media type in there that says this is a container image manifest. And then it says this is the config digest. And it's not just a digest. There's a little bit of extra metadata around it, so we call that a descriptor. That's the media type, the size of it, the digest that we're doing, maybe a few other bits of data in there as well. And that all gets packed in a little bit of JSON that we call the descriptor. So that's the config descriptor is one of them. And there's a descriptor for each one of the file system layers. Take all this together. This is a bunch of JSON. You ship that up to a registry. This has a digest. This is the digest you would pull if you ever wanted to have a pinned image. So in case you ever say, I want to run Alpine with the SHA-256 checksum after it, it's the digest on this JSON right here that you're running, that you're querying. And so the red trees know how to work with this. And we can also tag this. So we can say this is version 1 or something like that, and we would be running things by tag. There's another way that you can push a manifest up to a red tree, which is to pack multiple manifests together. So we push that one manifest that might have been for AMD64. And if you wanted to push the ARM64, and you want to have them both referenced with the same tag, you'll push a manifest list. So you've got multiple manifests all together. And again, this is also content addressable as well. So it's got its own digest. You would point your tag to this thing, and then a runtime would pull it down. And it would say, well, I've got multiple manifests here. I need to query and figure out which one I want to run. And it's going to figure that out just by looking for some other data in here. And so in this one, you can see, since we're multi-platform, it has the platform uh, definition for each one of these manifests. So it knows how to pick out the one platform it wants to from it. And it'll pull that one down, and it'll run that one. 
So that's how the runtimes use it, but you can put other stuff in here if you really wanted to, and the runtime should hopefully ignore it if it doesn't know what to do with it. So graphically, we just saw a bunch of text. Let's actually show a picture, because I think this makes more sense to people. We've got the tag out there that's mutable, so you can have the version one tag that keeps pointing a different manifest every time someone pushes a new version of that thing and they want to update the original v1 tag when v1.2 comes out. They can change that tag to point to a different manifest. And then we've got the index at the top, that's the manifest list. That's got the list of all the other manifests it's pointing to. And then each one of the platform specific manifests is in there. And each one of those has the config and the layers that we're running. So this is what the registries are looking at right now. This is what all the little data structures you're pushing up to the registry are doing. And this is kind of the stuff that we're going to get into. The important detail here that I want to stress is that registries care about the blue boxes. Those are the manifest. Registries don't care what you throw in the green box. You can throw whatever you want to in there. While we were putting tar files in there, we were putting JSON chunks of code in there. You can put whatever the heck you want in there, and we'll see why that's important in a little bit. All right. So we talked about what an image is. Let me do a quick detour on CI/CD pipelines, because that's going to be the other big important chunk of this detail here. And so this is how we're going to build them. We're going to build them with a CI pipeline that goes through these normal steps. And we're going to do not just like a build ship run, as best as Docker has their cool slogan, and it's a great slogan. We really do things like linting, and we're doing the compile steps and unit tests and other kind of checks in there before we finally build the image, and then we push the image up to a registry, and then hopefully we deploy it, right? And that's kind of the standard CI pipeline, how we're getting this stuff out to production. Except this list is really growing. We've started with this, but I don't know if anybody ever heard the term SBOM. That might have been floating around a little bit, right? You know, a couple of people heard that. So we're starting to throw a lot more stuff out there in addition to just building our image. And so we're generating the SBOM. We're doing attestations to say this is all the steps we actually ran our CI pipeline so that we have some verification of what, what actually took place there. We're doing vulnerability scanning. We're pushing up all kinds of other data. Maybe someone wants to push cat pictures. And oh, by the way, that's the drinking game for the day because every time I say something about a cat picture, you're going to get a cat picture. So, and believe me, you can push a cat picture up to the registry. It's just another blob to it. So, the big question is, should we be using a registry, right? That, that was the title of the talk, you know, don't, don't use a registry for everything, stop doing it. And it's not because you're filling my hard drive up with all your images and I wanted you to stop. That was going to be like a quick five second TED talk I was going to give at the beginning, but I skipped over that little, who knows if that was a funny joke or not. Um, but the question is, should it go to a registry? And the answer is, yeah, it should. But the question is, when should it go to the registry is my question. And maybe with the exception of the cat pictures. You don't have to push a cat picture to the registry. But the question of when is because we're doing a CI pipeline, we've got everything in a CI pipeline today is based off of a file system. You build your application, you compile your binary, you run your linting, you generate your unit test report. All this stuff is on like a working directory within your CI pipeline today. And then suddenly you start shipping all the stuff out to a registry. And then you run your next step of generating the SBOM, and what does it have to do? Well, to generate the SBOM on a container, which it has to go out to the registry and pull those layers back down to scan them and to do all those other checks. And so what your pipeline starts to look like is this, where we go out there and we generate our image, we push it out to the registry, and then we pull back the same image that we just had built locally, and we try to scan it. And then we go out and we pull the same image locally again so that we can do the SBOM generation. And then we push the signature up there. And I don't know if people can look at this and figure out some challenges here, but one is that we're doing a whole lot of network traffic we don't need to do. But think about the gap there between when we first push that image and when it's finally out there signed and ready to be deployed. There's a gap of a lot of potential issues, right? If the vulnerability scan says, no, this is bad, don't run it, we've already shipped it to the registry. And if we are trying to do something like only deploy signed code and we just push this out as a new version one tag, and then five steps later we finally sign it at the end of the pipeline, well, what happens when someone in the middle of that tries to deploy us out to their production runtime, and all of a sudden the, the ingress controller, or sorry, the um, emission controller says, oh no, that's an unsigned image. Let me you know, notify the SOC that we're just trying to run an unsigned image in our production infrastructure. That's not a great CI workflow either, right? So we, we got some issues. So how can we do this? Well, the CI pipelines are designed to work off a file system. So why don't we use a file system for this stuff? And some of you might be saying, well, great, I already do that. I've got the Docker engine. I just do a Docker and Docker build. Maybe not. I think there are a bunch of chain guard people out there. They're probably saying do use code or some other better tool out there. Um, but if you're doing a Docker and Docker install and you've got the Docker engine there and you try to run that, well, you're only doing a single platform at that point. 
because if you store the image local in the Docker engine, it's only one platform, and then to generate the SVOM, you're still unloading it to a file system outside of the Docker engine into a tar file and extracting it and doing all this stuff. There are a lot of extra pieces and steps, and you know that's only solving it with one case. So let's talk about the better way to do that, which is there is an OCI image layout. So this is the first you know world premiere of this file system layout. And, you know no one else has ever seen this before. I kid, sorry, you know, this has been around for a while, probably about five years now. But hopefully, you know, people are thinking this is awesome. We can use this. Um, and the reason you might be thinking that is when you first see the big chunk of this in here, your eyes probably jumped right to that big S bomb, or sorry, the digest section at the bottom. That's your content addressable store. So we've got a file system format defined by OCI with the, file, with the content addressable store you can put right in a directory with the same kind of ways that we're querying stuff in a registry a day. So this exists now, it's been defined by OCI, it's been out there forever. And so we've got the content addressable store, we need two other pieces. Um, one, there are these two other files at the top. The very first file you can see at the top of the screen there is saying this is my OCI layout, so this is what you're expecting to see inside this directory. That's kind of like a little key there, it's got a version number, make sure that you know that this is the real thing that we're talking to, we're not confusing it with something else. The other piece there is really important, index.json. In case you're paying attention earlier, we were talking about the manifest list, also OCI calls that an index. Same concept, it is a list of manifest. And so we just need a way to query from that list of manifest, the one manifest we're looking for out of that list. And if we do that, in this case, we're, we've got a little annotation there, we say this is the tag. And so if you go through this and you have multiple manifests, you can find your v1 tag, your latest tag, your v2 tag, your SBOM tag, whatever it is that's in there, all those can have different entries in this manifest list. And so now we have a way to represent what in registry land we call a repository. Same thing you say, group, grab, alpine, version one, version two, whatever from a place, all those things under the alpine entry, those are all different things in the same repository. And so you got multiple tags in the same repository, we got the way to do that on the file system right now with this layout. So I've seen this a fair bit. A um, bunch of the places that you might see this in the wild are with places that are doing air-gapped environments. So if you're trying to do an air-gapped deploy between pulling this stuff out from a, you know, a publicly accessible registry and you want to have this thing deployed into an air-gapped environment, you might use this format to store it into the file system and then ship it across the air-gap and then reinstall it either into your local runtimes or into a registry behind that air-gap. So it's a great way to do that. We also see that when we are packaging this stuff up as like a tar or TGZ, it's a great way to stream it if you have like an output from something. So a bunch of these commands out there will stream this as a single file. They just package it up as a tar or a gzip tar. And that's OCI says that's a valid way to ship it. The other cool thing about this is that we can use a docker load command with the same file. It just needs one extra JSON in there, one extra bit of JSON, and docker can load the same file structure in there it, it's basically compatible with each other. They're not identical, but they're compatible, so Docker can use those same, that same blob store, and you don't have to put the blobs in there twice. So it's a nice little slick format. It's got some good advantages. What's gonna happen with our pipeline tomorrow is that we're gonna have basically these steps. I'm gonna change the order around a little bit. So I'm gonna do my normal git clone, my linting, but instead of doing the build and ship all the way to a registry, I'm gonna just output it to an OCI layout and then I'm gonna do stuff like adding my annotations, or attestations, I'll do annotations too, they're fun as well. I'm gonna add my SBOM into there. I'm gonna do the vulnerability scanning, all this stuff I'm gonna run on the local file system, and then when I'm all done, and I said this looks good, we, we got to check the box, ship that whole thing as one unit up to the registry at the very end. And so now whenever someone pulls it down, they're only gonna pull down the finished product, and they're not gonna pull down something that's halfway finished, or something might have a vulnerability in there that you shouldn't have shipped in the first place. And so by doing that, I'm, I mentioned the magic word there, cat picture, so there you go, you get another cat picture. But the advantage of this, so let's talk about the feature. Well, I already mentioned that we're never gonna have an unscanned image that's been pushed up there where someone else could run it. And that's nice because when you're in a production environment, if you have somebody that's on uh, one of your nodes in your cluster that's pulling down a blob from a registry, that's normal. Nobody even thinks a second thought of it, so if you've got those blobs up there that potentially have vulnerable data, someone could use that to get their way to get vulnerable vulnerabilities into your cluster that you don't want them to, be, to have. So we don't want them running this kind of stuff one way or another. We don't want them able to access it. Um, yeah, unsigned images, we're not gonna have those out there, so you're not gonna be able to pull those by accident. And yeah, the CI system is gonna be a lot more efficient. So the previous way we saw the CI going back and forth over the network, 
Now all this stuff is local on the file system. We keep all the steps local on the file system, bury in, then we ship it out. So that's the goal. That's what we're trying to do. So you might be saying, this is awesome. Sign me up. Let, let's do this, right? So if you're convinced, I got the good news and I got the bad news. So the good news is that there's a lot of tooling that supports this today. And so we got stuff out there, runtimes, pick your runtime, container D, Podman. I'm not going to pick a winner in this fight. Um, they all can import this stuff. It, it just works. We've got a lot of the build tooling out there. Just about everybody has a way from the build tooling that they can output to this layout. And they can generate this for you. We've got a registry out there that uses this. Um, shouldn't really have to from a registry standpoint. It's usually out of their view. But there is an interesting example out there called Zot where it will take this as its backend at, for repository. And so you can query this as if it was a repository. So I'll show you an interesting use case where that can be handy in a bit. We've also got a couple of registry clients. I mentioned one of the ones I was working on was RegClient. There are a couple other competitors out there. From Google, we got Crane. Um, from Scopio, comes out from the Red Hat side. We're all doing similar stuff where we're just giving you ways to access and work with a registry. And so we can query all this stuff and move it back and forth between a registry and an OCI layout and then push it back again. This is how you work with that air gap. These are the kind of tools you use for working in that air gap environment. We've also got vulnerability scanners. So I'll pick on Gripe and Trivi right there, where they'll work with the directory itself. They'll scan it. The challenge is they're only going to scan a single image from there, not even a multi-platform image. They're only looking for a single image. So it's limited support. Not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Um, the other one that I didn't list there, uh, didn't call out there, Sneak, they're looking for a tar file. So it works. Not perfect, but it works. The, um, from the SBOM side, both SIFT and Trivi, they'll generate from an OCI layout. So if you point them to one of these directories, they will uh, do their SBOM scan, as long as it's a single image again, just like before. And so you can generate your SBOM off of this stuff. And then for signing, I, I'm still going to have to work on the cosign team over there. Um, they got some good stuff. I don't think we got support to do this directly from them signing it yet, but that, that's probably half on me to start working on a PR from them as well. But that was uh, you know, kind of the bad news. And I didn't even put a cat call out on the previous slide, but I am going to call it out right now, which is that all this stuff is talking about how we can scan stuff that's in an OCI layout, but all this stuff can also be pushed to the registry as well or into an OCI layout as well. So the output from that SBOM, it would be really cool to start shipping that alongside of our image so that we're not trying to keep the two in sync from wherever they are, just push them together. So the image and the SBOM together are being shipped. And then when someone deploys it out later on, they pull it down. They can pull down the SBOM right next to their image. Um, and so you can do that because just like you can push any cat picture you want, you can also push any other data you want up to the registry as a blob and put a little extra metadata around it so you can ship that around. So that's the good. I mentioned it with the bad. Um, so the bad, Phil, we got to do some work out here. Um, we don't have a standard around this stuff. If you look at what a uh, reference is, and if you never heard that term, if you ever gotten the error message from Docker that said uh, invalid reference format, there might be a few heads nodding saying, yeah, I've run into that error before. I've mistyped a Docker run command in the past. Um, that is basically saying this string translates into run this image somewhere. And how we translate that string to that image is not a standard. We have not standardized that in OCI, um, which would be a great place to standardize it. More importantly, it's kind of a convention that came out of Docker and it got put in a distribution and everybody's kind of adopted the same standards. So we all kind of agree that when you say Alpine Latest, you really mean Docker Hub and to go out and expand all that stuff and to assume that Latest is the default tag. We've kind of gotten that as a convention. We're pretty good about that. We got no convention at all when we reference this stuff as an OCI layout. We, everybody's picking a different example. Um, Scopio went with an OCI colon and I think they allow you to put a tag on the end of that. Um, when I've looked at a couple of the tools coming out of, um, oh, who was it out here that I was thinking of? Um, Anchor. Anchor has a couple tools out there where they call OCI dash dir in the directory name. They don't let you specify which one, which image in there, so you can't like put a tag name in there or digest, so that's why we can't do the multi-platform from all the Anchor tools right now. Um, we've also got the OCI dir colon slash slash. That came out of RegClient, so that's me. Um, I was looking at URIs and saying this looks a lot like a URI, so that might be a good syntax for how to do this. And then just last week, I had to update this slide because Docker uh, Build Kit started adding their own way to reference this stuff with an OCI dash layout and using the same URI syntax in there. So everybody seems to be picking a different way, so we need to probably standardize this. So that's not great. 
you know, we can probably work with it. You're only building a CI tool, CI pipeline for one tool. So you can probably work around this. We've also got a working group over in OCI is trying to figure out how you standardize attaching all this stuff to an image. And so you push your V1 image out to a registry, it'll be nice to have a standard way to say this is how you attach the SBOM to that image. So OCI is working on that now. We've got a working group. We call it the reference type working group. I'd rather call it the refers working group because references is always already an overloaded term. Um, too late now. We already picked the name. Uh, I'm going to lose that battle. But um, yeah, we're trying to figure out how we attach stuff to our container image. So just like we do signatures today with cosine, um, that's one of the several proposals we're looking at. The same kind of syntax that they push a signature up alongside your image. We're looking at, do we use that? Do we do some other formats in there? There are a couple different competing options. So if you've got an opinion on that, now it's time to come over to that side and give us uh, your thoughts and thumbs up and thumbs down of what you'd like to see. Also, a lot of these tools assume they're generating the OCI layout and that nobody else has touched it before or that they're consuming it and they don't have to do anything with it. They're not writing it. They're either creating it or reading it. They're not modifying it. And if you ever get in a tool that needs to start figuring out how to modify one of these directories and assume that maybe there was already a V1 in there and you're adding a V2 in that same directory, or maybe V2 was already there and now you're overwriting that manifest, we're probably going to have to start worrying about things like garbage collection. That's an extra challenge that registries have already solved and anybody writing this tooling on the OCI layout is going to have to think, oh, I need to do garbage collection now too. That's an extra problem they didn't think about earlier. So that's the bad. The ugly is that there are a lot of tools that don't even support this yet. And so I called out Cosign just because I really actually like them. So as much as I like them, I'm, I'm, I'm picking on them just because I, I really want to see them supported. So I'm, I'm going to see if we can make that happen. Um, but in addition to that, there are a bunch of tools that only support this if it's in a TAR or a TGZ. And so if you're doing a CI pipeline, you don't want to generate this thing and then TAR it up, ship it to a tool that then extracts the TAR into a temporary directory and does all this stuff. You've got the directory. Just read the directory. Why, why go through this extra bit of steps? So it would be nice if everything could work with however this thing is packaged and not be picky about the input format there. And in addition to that, the big challenge that I've been pointing out is that a lot of stuff is looking at it saying, well, I recognize if it's only one image in there, but not if we've got multiple tags, not if we're trying to pick out a single platform from a multi-platform image or, you know, heaven forbid, do an SBOM scan on the, all the platforms that we just generated. Um, and we're definitely not being able to pick out, you know, the digest and the multi-platform components. So it would be nice if they all support a syntax for that. And so that would be another nice feature we should probably get out of this. So hope I didn't scare everybody away. Hope, hope I didn't terrify you, because I do at least have a workaround um, for people who want to try this today. And so if you want to try this today, Zada is a kind of a nice cool tool I mentioned earlier on, where if I do my reg cuddle and I'm listing what is in this current OCI layout directory, you can see at the top of this slide here, I've got a, a latest tag and then a couple other digest tags in there. I call them It's like a digest schema that we're using for this tag to reference an SBOM and a scan result that are affiliated with this latest image. And if I want to do a cosine sign on this thing, I can spin up a Zot container and I listen on a local port, so this is on localhost, nobody's going to be accessing this from outside. I mount my volume into that, so my OCI layout is now mounted into the demo directory. And now I can do a cosine sign on localhost against the demo repo and I'm, tagging, I'm doing a set sign on this thing the end result is when I go query that OCI layout now, I've got a now, a, now a, um, a signature in there. And so I've created a signature in this OCI layout without having to upgrade cosine itself. So we just spun up a registry on the fly that was able to access this and make it accessible to the tools that don't know how to work with it. So there is a workaround, so never fear. So got plenty of time here. Let's show some actual code. Let, let's show this stuff, and I, I didn't want to actually flip screens around and try to get all this stuff uh, fit on the slide and deal with me scrolling around. So static bits of code here. The initial, this is a GitHub action. So off of GitHub actions, startup, you know, the initial part of this is pretty generic, pretty standard, where I'm just doing a checkout. I am doing in here the go install. I'm also pulling down my reg cuddle tooling, my uh, build X, and uh, the cosine install. So I got my environment set up. This is nothing new. People have seen this before. Um, but the next step in here, the test, again, nothing new on here. We're doing testing, linting, all the stuff that you should be doing in your CI today, right? This, hopefully I see heads nodding that you're doing this already a day and I'm not like shocking you with you should be linting your code. Good, okay. So then we get to the part that might be a little bit new to people. 
which is when I do my build from, in this case I'm using buildx, instead of saying output this and push it up to a registry, it's got the option to output it into a OCI layout.tar. And so I'm just outputting this into the local directory as a tar file. And I could, there was a trick in there where I could have this generate the annotation. I didn't realize that because it's an undocumented trick. So because it didn't have the layout, the label in there saying this is the latest tag, I was using regcuddle to convert that into an OCI layout. They also put some read-only permission bits on things that I'm not a fan of, and so this kind of handles a couple of those other permissions and things like that, but it also doesn't assume that nobody else has created one of these OCI layout directories. So when you do the regcuddle import, if there's already another thing in there and you're overriding it, this is also going to handle the garbage collection and stuff like that. So a couple features in there beyond just doing a tar extract. But now we've got the OCI layout directory in our pipeline that we can access, all right? So then I do a couple tweaks in here. I think I've heard people that have been interested in some of this stuff where I modify the image after I create it. And this is kind of like, you know, the, the Brandon going off on his own little world here because some of the stuff I'm working on, you can't set annotations on an image um, from a Docker build and, or from a Docker file. You can set labels, but you can't set annotations. And anybody that doesn't know the difference between the two, the labels in the image config, that config JSON that we saw at the very beginning of this presentation, the annotation is in the manifest, so two different places. And the reason that it is important in those two different places is this tooling that queries and looks for the annotation. If it's really looking for an annotation, it's going to look on the manifest. And if you haven't set it over there, it's not going to look for it, and you're not going to find it. So this way you can set it inside the manifest itself. The other thing I've been playing around with is how I can make images reproducible. And so I've been backdating my timestamps. So instead of saying all my images are timestamped from the current time right this second, I backdate it to the git commit time. I don't want to backdate it to 1970 because I don't want to mess up my base image. I don't want to change all the timestamps and all this stuff because not only am I changing the timestamp from my image history and from my config file, there's a timestamp in there. I'm actually going through the file system layers and I'm backdating all the timestamps on the files in the file system. So a couple of tweaks there. This step right here was when I'm starting backdating timestamps is why I really want to play around with OCI layout because I really don't want to go back and forth to a registry changing this stuff. I'd much rather have it all local in the file system before I ship this stuff up. So this is me just having fun. Well, we had plenty of time for me to have fun, so I didn't mind throwing this one in. But the one I think other people are really interested in is, okay, let's generate the SBOM. And so there is a way with, I'm picking on the Anchor tools here, but pick your SBOM generator. Hopefully they support this stuff. Um, where they're processing as their input, the OCI dir colon OCI layout. The OCI layout is the directory name. The OCI dir is their little prefix that says this is an OCI layout file. So I do my SBOM generation, I do my scan, and now all this stuff is happening local in the file system. We haven't gone out to a registry anymore. So now we're speeding up the pipeline, we're getting rid of all that network contention. And then at the very end, I'm starting to throw this up in, I'm attaching this to my image now. Earlier you saw me doing a uh, a tag listing in there and you saw like the scan and the SBOM result. Well, if I want to attach it, I've got this big, long, crazy, uh, you know, a reg cuddle command there that's doing all this attach command. This is experimental. Don't trust this for a production use case just yet. We're still trying to figure out in OCI what we want it to look like. Um, so this is one of the many proposals of how we could potentially do it. But um, if you don't use the refers tag there in the end and you actually give it a special tag, you can do whatever you want to. That, that gets into normal, just pushing up an artifact into a registry. And I'm capturing the digest here. So the output of this thing, I do grab the digest from that SBOM when I push it up to the registry. And the reason I do that is when I come down to my scan step, at the very bottom of the screen, you can see I push two scans, as, or two signs in my cosine, two signatures in my cosine command. I sign the latest tag, should be like a version number or something like that. And I sign the SBOM digest. And so now I've got a signed digest, or a signed SBOM, so people can actually trust this SBOM came from a trusted source, hopefully now. And to do this, I had to use Zot. And so I spun Zot up in the pipeline. And I've got the Docker run command there, just like we saw earlier. You just spin up the Docker run, it runs the Zot image. I uh, mount my volume in there. And there we go. I can now sign the stuff within my GitHub pipeline. Git, yeah, GitHub Actions. This was all on the OCI layout, so this is all local on the file system. So now I got to ship this up to a registry, because eventually at the end, I actually do love registries, despite the fancy title of the talk. And so this at the very end is where I say, okay, take this thing that's in the OCI layout and ship the whole thing, one unit, all the other digest tags, everything all together up to the registry in one big unit. And so this all goes at once. So now anybody that pulls this down sees it. As soon as they see the version one image, they also see the SBOM, they also see all the signatures. We haven't uh, separated any of those steps from each other. 
So that is what we've got for this stuff. In conclusion, um, you know, I'll give you a couple takeaways I'd love to see. One, I'd love to see OCI define what a reference is. Um, so hopefully we can get that done. And the reason I put this up top is because if we can do this and define this what a reference is, hopefully that can become a standard that all the tooling can start adapting to and we can just have this as a standard syntax that all the tooling can expect and then we can make this a little bit more portable across all the tools out there. And so once we get that, I'd love to see OCI layout much better support across all the tools out there. And so not just able to read a single image out there, a single platform image, support the multi-platform images, support querying different tags from this thing. You know, Because when we start pushing stuff up, when we start pushing our SBOM up to this OCI layout, there will be multiple tags. And so if we can't query, the, you know, figure out that we want the latest tag out of there, and you see an SBOM out there, and now you can't sign it, that's not a good world. We need to be able to query which tag we want to do this command against. Um, yeah, and then I'd love to be able to support not only that, but digest multi-platform images. They're big. People have M1s out there, I think. Maybe a few in the audience right now. If so, your battery life is probably awesome. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see us do that. And then, yeah, the working group, if we can get that done, now we've got a way that we can standardize how we're shipping these S-bombs so that now, whether it's Cyclone DX, whether it's SPDX, pick your format, I'm, I'm not gonna pick a winner in that fight, we can ship it in a standard way up to a registry and get this pushed out there so that now someone that's pulling down this image can know that, oh, by the way, I got this image, but it also has the S-bomb right there. It's also a signed S-bomb. We've standardized all these syntaxes. Hopefully, all the tooling can start working together with each other and interoperate, and so we get this pluggable infrastructure. And we don't have to say, this is our emission controller, and our emission controller only works with this one S-bomb generator. You know, that's not the world we want to be in. So I'd love to see a lot more portability and plug and play in this ecosystem. And so, yeah, the end result, hopefully I'd love to see us get something that's more efficient, more modular, more secure, you know, and then we can get the cat pictures out there, right? So that, that's the end goal, of course. So you sat through this much. I'm told that if uh, IBM required me to throw this on the slide, they paid me a bunch of money to say this stuff, right? You know, so um, the, the image, if you scan the QR code, I don't know. I think a small dinosaur does something funny. I'm not quite sure what that does exactly. Um, so, yeah, do that. And of course, lawyers out there saying, you know, you're now legally obligated to visit their booth in the expo hall. I don't argue with lawyers. They tell me it's a requirement. So yeah, don't argue with lawyers. You never win. Um, and if that QR code wasn't enough fun for you to scan, here's another one. The QR code here actually goes to the presentation link up top. So that is where you can download all these slides. The second link in there, the GitHub link, will tell you um, where that lay, the whole GitHub action that we were talking about earlier that's sitting out there, ignore all the fails in the GitHub action as I was trying to make this demo actually work. Um, there is a successful run at the end, and so you can see this actually does work in a production ecosystem, but you know, this was the minimal viable product because if you really scan closely, you would have seen that I was only building a single platform image. You know, we were working around some of the constraints of the tooling we were working with here. So with that, that is it. Do we have some questions from the audience? I'll open it up. Anybody want to fix a tool? Question from the audience. Go for it. I have a virtual question from the attendee. Do you see more and more images become OCI compliant? So do I see more and more images becoming OCI compliant? And the answer is pretty much yes. If you look at the OCI compliant, I think they actually say that if you're a Docker image, you're still kind of quasi compliant. I think I saw something that a runtime was supposed to support even the Docker images. What I'm seeing, though, is especially when you start to export stuff to this OCI layout, a lot of the tooling just switches over from generating the Docker schemas, the manifest types and whatnot, to generating the OCI manifest types. And so, yes, I absolutely see a lot of that. And from the tooling, we just don't even care. Whether it's OCI or whether it's Docker, it just runs from the runtime. I will say if you're going to start attaching annotations to your image, you probably want the OCI layout. My tooling will let you throw an annotation in there even though you're not supposed to um, because the Docker doesn't support that officially on their uh, media types. So. Once you get into that part, yeah, go OCI. Any others? Yeah, go for it. How far, so a lot of things, like how charts can be put into OCI image, and for Red Hat, you know, to deploy some of their operators with the manifest OCI images. How far should we take this? Should we be using it for software packages and things like that? Or is there a point that it's good for but Yeah. So the question, how far should we take this? Should we be using it just for the Helm charts, or should we be putting everything in there? What should we be putting in there? Um, the question that I've seen a lot from people is, OK, I've generated my SBOM. 
and I want to go ahead and you now query this. I've got the log4j vulnerability just came out. Tell me all the images out there that have log4j. Well, OCI is not a great interface for querying that. OCI is a great interface for saying, here's a bunch of data, pull it down, and then use it with whatever tooling you need to use it in. And so it's a good packaging format to ship stuff around in. It's not a good format for doing a lot of these query interfaces to say, OK, which one of these things has this one vulnerability or something like that. So I think it, I look at it much more as the storage and the transport. I don't see it as like the query database that you would use for like a runtime or something like that. So it's, it's that middle step. Um, so that's the best answer I can give you. If, if it's something out there, I've seen people put uh, um, like Debian container images. Akahiro is going out there doing all kinds of awesome stuff, throwing things in OCI registries. Go for it. Throw everything in a registry. I love it, um, despite the title of the talk. Start from the front and I'll work my way back. Go for it. Uh, so I see that there's some interplay between annotations, annotations, layouts, and the things. May step into each other's toes. Is my question correct? That if it is correct, I think there will be a future in which they may combine to some sort of like overlay sort of a understanding about the, about the container itself. The so. Yeah, so thinking about all the metadata together and how we understand image with the layouts and the annotations and the attestations and whatnot. I think attestations is going to stick around as external metadata that people are going to look at just kind of like for auditing. They want to know that you know, the security team comes through and says, make sure you actually did these steps. I think annotations is going to have a fair bit of that metadata shoved in there, probably more than some people are comfortable with. But I think a lot of that's going to go in that path in terms of we're expanding it. And then once you get something that's too big to fit into that little space, we say we don't want you to go more than like 4K in that length of what you're putting in the uh, annotation. I think that's when you're going to start to see it's going to go into an external file. That's where the SBOM goes. The SBOM says it's going to be shipped as a blob. It's not going to be shipped as an annotation. So there's once you cross the size threshold, you have to switch over. And so I think tooling just needs to understand which side it needs to fall on, depending on what kind of stuff it's pushing up to the registry. Yeah, working back, go through. Yeah. Uh, so given that the, all, all the, once you build the artifact, all, all the data is in the file system, how do you make sure it is not, it is not tapered with, uh, before the final push to the registry? How do I make sure it's not what before the final push? It is not tapered, it is not changed or anything. It hadn't been tampered, okay. So everything in those uh, blobs, it's all um, content addressable. All those digest, if you tamper the contents there, you're changing the digest. So it's the digest of the content of the file, so you can't change it without someone being someone able to see it. Now, I do intentionally tamper. When I change all those timestamps and stuff, I am changing the digest of those blobs by doing that. So I am myself tampering it. That's me knowing that I did it myself. Uh, scanning, vulnerability scans, I would hope. Yeah. OK. Going back still. This idea is a slightly related problem of OCI references, which is there, the existing ones we have are absolute. And there's a problem, like, a different solution to this if you use a staging registry instead of a multiple one or things like that. But um, because things like a cosine signature, that payload actually includes the image name, which in this will be local host. Yep. And traditionally, you'd want your final destination. So I don't, I don't know the right solution there. Yeah. Right uh, So my philosophy on that one, if you're doing something like an image signing, my philosophy is the person doing the signing should be able to say these are the different names that I expect this to show up with later on because if you're signing it on a staging server, you're going to have the staging server name in there and you probably don't want that. Um, so I think it would be nice if you were just able to sign it and say, I as a signer am saying that this is going to eventually be known as this official repo out there in the real world and so I'm going to create that and I'm going to push that up to my OCI layout and then ship it to the staging and then ship it to somewhere else in production and it's just going to be the same annotation everywhere. Yeah, so, so rather than embedding that, just to embed the actual final name. Cool. I think we got time for maybe one more question out here. Last chance. Anybody want to be last? One from the back. Go for it. Yep. So you do everything local and then push out. But what if my cat picture takes two days to be produced? Are you still wanting to support that remote fetch and attach? Or are you saying are you saying more commonly do the sec the new pattern or do you want to completely move the 
I mean, if you've got a step that's not going to fit in your CI pipeline just because it's like a long-term thing, you need to do it after the fact, then yeah, you can do it after the fact. I'm not, I'm not going to be too picky there. But um, otherwise, yeah, it would be nice if everything that needs to happen within that CI pipeline, especially the stuff that's security critical, all happens within that file system and gets shipped as one unit. So I think that's all the time I got time for today. Thanks so much.